place, uh, this studio is really homely. You come here, you feel welcome, we have a chat, we get some food, some drinks, and it's really sort of, uh, it makes you feel comfortable. You know? Whereas other, other parlors aren't, all, you know, studios aren't always so welcoming. But this, yeah, with, uh, with Galaxy Tattoo, it's always a laugh. It's nice, funny, and it's not bossy, so it's a very nice boss, nice teacher and everything, very patient. A few years ago I was looking around for some Japanese style tattoo artists here in Singapore, and I sort of did a bit of research and got recommended to Niku. And uh, on my first consultation I showed him some lots of images of the woodprint work by Japanese artists, and then he just created a composition based on what I wanted. So basically I choose him because detail, and the, the care he puts into it, the colour work, because the, the quality is just first class. We go to the source, go to the roots. It's all from Japan. And in Japan, they're really very particular about their own culture, or Bushido, the spirit of the samurai, how they respect their master. You know. So basically, when we, or the Taiwanese people, or the China people, or whoever, even like Caucasians, who flew into Japan to, to learn the culture, or to learn the technique of tattooing or to visit the master and everything. We get influenced not only by their work, maybe through their personality, through their culture, how the student, the apprentice, the student respect the master, how the client respect the master, how client walking they really want tattoo from the master. In Japan they really do respect that. And even the apprentice to come to learn from the master, they really respect that part too. For what I'm doing is I think it's more oriental, you know, than really traditional Japanese style. And also maybe like a bit like new school Japanese style or something like it's just the out shape and the, maybe the subject is Japanese style but the background is totally different from how Horyoshi, Horyashu, all these big sensei. Yeah, it's totally different from that, you know. So the demand in Singapore why people coming back, I think it's just also a trend. Everybody getting big back piece. You know, from but one good thing is last time it's only gangs that get full back and big back tattoo. You know. Now it's different. It's like everybody from different lines of jobs. You know, they come in, they want a full back. I tattoo lawyers, doctors. So which is really nice, I think, to to have some changes in the scene of tattoo in Singapore. Actually, the layout and the line is really important. How like how the layout of the whole sleeve or the whole not about one point tattoo like the sleeve, a uh, hand sleeve, a leg sleeve, or a full back or full front. The layout actually is really important. Like how you lay out your subject and how you lay out the background, the foreground. Not too much cut over until you can't even see the subject. You know, you got to be really clean. Just like the line itself, when the line is done and it looks really clean. The shading and the colour is just additional bonus to look, make it look better. I try to develop and change because everybody try to express themselves in their own way which is very difficult. <laughs> so till now, like in Singapore maybe people will see, okay, oh it's by Nick. They can tell from some part of the details or the colours or how the layout of the whole back piece or something. But I'm still copying some from here, from there, and everything. I'm still trying my very best to come up with something that maybe is like what you, everybody wanted to, it's like their own style. Compared to maybe, let's say, not too far, two, three years ago to my work, the changes of right now is uh, I use more colors and it's, uh, more softer color, cold color, like very light blue, light turquoise, you know, light bright yellows, all this. I use more of this light color right now. And I build in more like um, before I use more baker and bow line. Now I try to use more like fine lines with all the details. Definitely, I love to do like more bigger tattoos, you know, because it's 
um, I like like dragging like big lines, you know, long lines, and rather than just keep focusing on the palm size tattoo, you gotta do all the small details, which actually take me more time than doing a bigger tattoo. And was lucky enough uh, at that time, I think I met Peter, and he did offer me that say he's going to visit Horoshi, asked me to come along. And that was the same time when we visited Horyoshi and he became Horyoshi student and I became Horyoshi godson. And then Peter was like thinking like, you know, should I you know, approach and tell Horyoshi I want to be the student? So when Peter actually asked, then my dad was there and my dad's like, why don't you ask also? And then, but at the time I was just very like, just got my machine, that's it, you know, I haven't really even basically started tattooing and everything. So, and then, Horoshi actually said yes, and I was like, so okay, you know. Yeah, and then, to actually, me and Peter, two of us at the same time, we yelled out, give him tea and everything, in the restaurant. Yeah, that's it. Oh, no, he, uh, I didn't went through any apprenticeship with him. Because uh, for going through an apprenticeship in, in the Japanese culture, the first year you can't even get near to the master. You know, you can't sit next to him, you can't even go, go near him or you watch him tattoo. So basically you're just cleaning, serving customer, clean up and uh, all this thing. So only second year then maybe you can get near to the master. But uh, for me, no. It's like straight I went to him, he asked me to come by, sit next to him, watch him tattoo, you know, ask him whatever I, I, need, I wanted to know. And he showed me how the drawing, like simple basic drawing of chords and everything. Yeah, so it should be actually really nice without Horyoshi, he doesn't have me today. Because I don't smoke, don't drink and don't gamble, I think mostly sports. Like uh, I go to the gym, I go to the fight gym. I, I started uh, martial arts when I was 11. I like collecting his stuff and also, but uh, he's also a big infant because I, I bought all his books, uh, even his interviews, everything related to him, like the movies or and any documentary. And he have a big part of the influence, like how he actually went through his life, how hard he struggled in the very beginning part. You know, like, I, I did understand how he lived alone and as a Chinese at that time in America. So that hit me a lot with how actually the kind of mentally and physically prepare for anything that you unexpected in your life. Yeah. It's what I know, I tell you. But it's not said that definitely I'm right or wrong. You know, I'm not sure how much you can learn from me and everything. It's like, it's just an advice, a guidance. You know, how you want to develop is your own choice. He will, he will give some pointers, uh, but he's not going to be there and tell you like, oh, you have to do this and that, this and that. Um, I'm enjoying my time here. I enjoy learning everything. There's always there's always something new to learn, like never ending. So that is good. Keep me busy all the time. Just like how what Louis say and how I teach Louis, how I taught Louis, how I taught uh, Das from Hong Kong. Basically, I would just tell them what I know and let them have the freedom to express themselves through what they learn from me. And it's not like you must draw like this. From A to B, you must be like this, you know, no. I just tell you how, and you do it your own way. You know, basically, because I want that particular skill and the art developed by yourself and expressing your own self, and not being the second me. How it started, actually, my apprentice does. He came over to Singapore to start to learn from me and I taught him for like three years. So with respect, he called me and he, he wanted to share with me and everything. So, but he's the owner also and he's, he runs the shop there. Definitely, I said, yeah, that's good, you know. So I give my full support for the studio, you use the name and everything. And I even do some painting for him, like in the studio you know, and everything. And he invited me over for the opening. And with his work, his character, to make me really Proud of him. Colors, needles, and stories. Memories I'd like to keep. 
forever close to my heart now Always following me Pictures and people and troubles I meet Fables I'd like to believe Inking reminders I keep on my of